Determine the scale factor by using the figures shown. It tells you figure A to figure B. That means figure B is the new and figure A is the original. I will do the last one as an example. Figure C is the original and figure B is the new. So that is 4 divided by 8. or one half. Here we have four sets of figures. Your job is to figure out which one does not belong. C is the only one that is not a scale drawing. You can see here, this is an enlargement. This one, the scale factor would be one, meaning it stays the same. This one would be a reduction, but these two figures are not the same shape. They're both triangles, but they're not the same triangle. And they're not different sizes of the same triangle. So C is the only one that does not belong. Construct a scale drawing of figure 1 by using the first scale factor and label it figure 2. The first scale factor is 1 third. A third of 3 is 1, and a third of 6 is 2, so we should have a 1 by 2 rectangle. and label that figure two. And then construct a scale drawing of figure two by using the second scale factor and label it figure three. So we're gonna take this one and scale it by a factor of four, so it should be four wide, and two scaled by a factor of four should make it eight tall. So a two, or a four by eight. We are going to draw a scale factor of this figure, figure one, by scaling it by a half. That should make it half of eight is four across the bottom, and half of six is three. So it should be a four by three by five triangle. Then label it figure two. Please make sure that you are using a straight edge to create your figures. So you have straight lines making your shapes. And then we're going to scale that by a scale factor of two. So scaling this by two, three times two is six, four times two is eight, and five times two is 10. For this one, we're scaling by a factor of three. Three times three is nine. 4 times 3 is 12, and 5 times 3 is 15. So I should have a 9 by 12, and that diagonal should be 15 long. Then label it figure 2. Now we are going to scale figure 2 by a factor of 2. 9 times 2 is 18, and 12 times 2 is 24. So it should be 18 tall, 24 across the bottom, and then 30 as its diagonal. First scale factor is one third. A third of 12, that means you split it into three parts, would create a four by four square. Then we are going to scale that by one fourth. If we split four in four parts, a fourth of four will create a one by one square. Here we are going to scale it by four to start. 4 times 6 is 24, and 4 times 3 is 12, so we need a 12 by 24 rectangle. 
a third of 12 is 4, and a third of 24 is 8. So now we need an 8 by 4 rectangle. This is figure 3. For your assigned problem, compare the original figure, figure 1, to the second scale drawing, figure 3. Does the second scale drawing appear to be a scale drawing of the original figure? Justify your thinking. If so, what scale factor relates the two figures? We are going to use problem E as our assigned problem to answer question 2. The second scale drawing does appear to be a scale of the original figure. Because it is the same shape, it's just a different size. We also need to state what scale factor relates the two figures. The original was a 6 by 3, and the second scale drawing was an 8 by 4. So the scale factor that relates the two, we would take the 8 from the new and the 6 from the original, or we could use the 4 from the new and the 3 from the original, because those are both corresponding parts. And you might notice that 8 sixths reduces to 4 thirds. So the scale factor we used was 4 thirds. And all sides were used to scale with that same scale factor, which is another reason that we're justifying it is, in fact, a scale drawing of the original. With your group, predict the scale factor that takes figure 1 to figure 3 for each of the remaining parts of problem 1. We already did part E, so we need to go back through A, B, C, and D. Then complete each scale drawing by using the assigned scale factors to check the accuracy of your prediction. We already drew these scale drawings, so you don't have to worry about that part. In class, you would have only completed one of those up to this point. Be prepared to share how your group made predictions about the scale factor that takes figure 1 to figure 3. In E, we had 4 thirds. Recognize that it is the scale factor times the second scale factor. Perhaps that holds up for all of them. In part D, we had 1 third and 1 fourth. So if we were to multiply those, that would give us a scale factor of 1 twelfth. And we did see that our final picture had a side length of 1, which is in fact 1 twelfth of 12. So part D, the scale factor from figure 1 to figure 3, should be 1 twelfth. Here, the scale factor would be 3 times 2, which is 6. In part B, we have 1 half times 2, which is a scale factor of 1. And we did see that the original figure and the final figure were the same size. And in part A, 1 third times 4 is also 4 thirds. It does ask us to share how we made these predictions about the scale factors. So we can say we multiplied the first scale factor by the second scale factor. Figure 2 is a reduction of figure 1 and was produced by using a scale factor of 3 fourths. Figure 3 is a reduction of figure 2 and was produced by using a scale factor of 1 half. Is figure 3 a scale drawing of figure 1? Yes. 
both figure one and figure three are proportional to figure two. You can also think of it as figure two is a scale drawing of figure one, and figure two is also related to figure three, so then these two must be related to each other. What scale factor reduces figure one to figure three? We are going to multiply the original scale factor and the new scale factor. That would give us a scale factor of 3 eighths. Write an equation that represents a relationship between the side lengths of figure 3 and figure 1. Let y represent the side length of figure 3 and x represent the corresponding side length of figure 1. This is just like our format for proportional relationships. The k in this case is going to represent our scale factor. So it should say y equals, replace the k with 3 eighths, and then x for figure 1 side lengths. The figures shown are regular pentagons, meaning that each pentagon has five sides that are the same length. If a side length of figure 1 is 40 units, what is the corresponding side length of figure 3? x represented the side lengths of figure 1, so I'm going to replace x with 40 and solve it for y. 40 times 3 is 120. There's an invisible 1 here, so 1 times 8 is 8. And then we can divide 120 by 8 which is 15. So the side length in figure three would be 15 units. Please make sure your workbook is filled in and your warm up is complete.